So we're stepping into the world of data. So we're gonna take After Effects and the concept of infographics and create a motion graphic infographic. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. As always, hope you're doing excellent today. This is a very easy tutorial because we're simply gonna show how to create clean graphics to display the data that you need. So if you're ready to create something awesome, be sure to drop a like on this video. It helps us out tremendously and let's jump into the video. All right, so here we are in After Effects. You can download our project files for free if you wish to follow along. So, so looking at the timeline here, there's a lot of different layers involved, but I promise you that once we set up one of these, everything's gonna fall in place really quick. So this is honestly a very quick and easy tutorial to accomplish. So the very first thing we wanna create is the first data point, and then we're gonna be able to duplicate it from there. So here we are in our tutorial composition. We already have a background here, but that doesn't matter. So first things first, let's go ahead and create the shape. So we need a bullet point. So we'll grab the ellipse tool and we'll draw out a perfect circle like this. One thing we want to do is make sure that anchor point is centered. So control, double click the pan behind tool and that will center that anchor point. So now that we have our shape in here, we can grab the textile tool and start typing out some text layers here. Perhaps I want this to say one for our very first bullet point. I'm gonna use the font beep as new. Didn't say it correctly, but there it is. Then I'm gonna continue typing out our next text layers here as well. And this time around, I'm gonna use the font uh, Montserrat. I, once again, I'm butchering these names, but there it is. But what I like about Montserrat typeface is that it has different fonts here that you can variate from, and it makes it really easy to use this. All right, so we have our layout done. We have up three text layers here, but you can add as many text layers as you need to display the information that you have to have for your project. So let's go ahead and talk about animating this. So let's grab our shape layer here. All we're gonna do is hit S on keyboard for scale, add keyframe, and we'll move it forward in time. And we'll set the scale down to 0%. And we'll make sure that these keyframes are only a few frames apart. And one thing we're gonna do is add an expression to the shape layer to give it a bounce animation. So I have this expression here. I'll go ahead and put this in the description of the video so you can copy it. And we'll come here to the scale stopwatch, alt click it, and we'll go ahead and paste that expression in there. And what's gonna happen is our shape layer is gonna have a quick bounce to it and it's gonna look really nice. So for our text on top of the shape layer, we'll do the same exact thing. We'll grab our text layer, hit S on keyboard for scale, add a keyframe, move it forward by a few frames, and then set the scale down to 0%. I'll click the stopwatch and we'll paste that same expression in there as well. So now we're gonna have this beautiful bounce animation here on our shape layer in text. All right, so we'll go ahead and animate the rest of the text here. So we'll grab our 2016, our date layer here. We'll open it up, we'll go to animate and we'll add scale to this and we'll set the scale down to 0%. And to animate this, we'll come here to add selector and we'll add expression. We'll open up their expression selector and we're gonna all click the stopwatch for the amount because we're gonna paste in another type of bounce animation in here. This time around, I'll have another expression in the description for you to copy. This is the second expression in the description. Just go ahead and copy it and paste it right into uh, the expression box. And this will give us another way to animate our title really quick uh, without having to work with keyframes. And more importantly, it's also a bounce animation. So for our last text layer that we'll animate, and this is the bulk of the information, we'll open it up. We'll come here to animate. We'll add position, we'll add an opacity, and we'll also add a line spacing. What we'll do is bring down the Y position down here, and we'll also increase the uh, line spacing. So this will open it up. We'll come here to opacity, set it to 0%. This time around, we'll just keyframe it. So we'll come here to range selector one, add a keyframe for start, move forward in time, maybe by almost a second, and set up to 100%. We'll select both these keyframes to the F9 on your keyboard to make them easy ease. Go to the graph editor, and we'll just go ahead and drag these handles into the center so let's create a quick snapping animation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our two text layers here, I'm gonna offset it in time so they don't come in at the same exact moment. And one last thing I will do is I'll come here to the range selector one and come here to advanced, and we'll change the uh, based on characters to lines. And it's up to you if you want to do that. When it's all said and done, we're gonna have a really cool animation like this. The text and everything flows together. As you probably predicted, before we move on, we've just released our new infographics template pack here for After Effects and of course, Premiere Pro. Like our other packs, you can preview and apply a template with one click within the Motion Duck extension. These infographics are highly customizable and you can quickly input your data very easily, whether you're in After Effects or Premiere Pro. And instead of taking about an hour to create your own infographic, you can have a full edited infographic within a few minutes for all your future projects. If you want to take a look at the whole infographics pack, be sure to check our links below. All right, so now that we have this information, this first data point done, moving forward now is so simple. We're so close to being done. So all we're gonna do is select all of our layers. Let's go ahead and change the color code of this so we can keep track of where everything's at. And we can position this maybe somewhere in the bottom portion of our composition like so. And simply all we're gonna do is take this information, we're going to duplicate it, go to edit, duplicate, 
bring everything up. We'll recolor code this so we know what is what. And what we're gonna do is click and hold down shift on our keyboard and this will allow us to just drag this over without affecting the Y value. And if you bring up the title action safe so you can see that this is the center of the composition and that looks great. And then we'll go ahead and continue to duplicate this one more time and we'll move this over to the other side of our composition like so, beautiful. And all right, and as you can imagine, we have to create two more duplicates here, but it's up to you how many points that you need. So we'll duplicate again. And this time around, we'll actually affect the Y value and just put it up here, duplicate once more, and we'll move over to the right. So it all depends on how you wanna lay things out, but now we only have two more things left to do. We have to create the line that goes across here and then we can offset everything in our timeline. So we'll grab the pen tool here to create the line. We'll go to the word fill, set it to none. Click on the word stroke, set a solid color, click okay. We'll use a stroke width of say three to five. I'll use three. And all we're gonna do is click a point in the middle of our very first circle. Go to the next one, click a point in roughly the center there as well. And just continue this zigzag path until you get to the last point. I'm actually gonna use a stroke width of like seven instead. And we'll make sure that the shape layer is underneath everything and we'll rename it to line. And you know, that's beautiful. So now all we have to do is animate it. So we'll open up our line layer here. We'll come here to add and we're gonna add a trim paths to this. We'll open up trim paths one. We'll come here to end percent, set to zero percent and we'll add a keyframe for start. We'll move forward in time. So maybe we want this to be two seconds in length and we'll set up to 100%. So if our line animated, we'll have this animation. So what we need to do now is offset our individual points in time when the line gets to that point. So grab our top layer here. And once that line gets to that point, we'll go ahead and just offset this in our timeline. And we'll go to the next point. Once that line gets over there, we'll offset it in time. So all these data points do not come in at the same time. So we'll go ahead and continue this. All right, so now if we've been following this, we have every single data point coming in at the right moment in time. And that looks awesome. So now you have the ability to grab your textile layer and start changing out the text however you see fit. So by adding and changing whatever text that you need to do, you're gonna be able to have this really cool and unique infographic here inside of After Effects. Let me know in the comments down below if you wanna see more infographic content. There's plenty of different graphics that we can create. Um, in the meantime, you can download our free After Effects and Premiere Pro packs. Those links will be below. There's like over like 100 templates in both of those packs. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and always be creating.